All right, we're live. Welcome everybody to another Evolve Lab Live. Hope everyone's doing real good. It's been a while since we've done one of these. We've been pretty busy, um, but working on some really cool stuff and some really fun things. And so today uh, we have a very special guest, Miguel. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Doing awesome. Good. Very cool. We're going to jump into some introductions here. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, who we are, what we do, um, but we also want to know where you guys are from, what you're about. Uh, so as we're doing introductions, if you guys could throw in the chat window, um, maybe where you guys are, are from, and then also, are you uh, in the architecture space, engineering, construction, facilities management, or maybe accounting? Maybe you're in something in like just totally random, you're in marketing, I don't know. Uh, throw it in there in the window. We wanna know kind of who's uh, here and who's calling in. Um, and while we're doing that, let's go ahead and uh i'm gonna share my screen make sure i do this right share screen okay share screen share screen cool so yeah kick things off here um i guess i'll start myself bill allen uh president with evolve lab kind of the dumb guy in the room um we have much smarter people on the team than myself um, and so I want to introduce, uh, maybe we'll jump in and do Jim first. Jim, you want to give an intro to yourself? Sure. Thanks, Bill. Hey, my name is Jim Grieve. I'm a BIM manager with Evolve Lab. Um, yeah. What do you want to know, Bill? I've been with Evolve Lab almost a year and, uh, yeah, architectural background and, uh, I'm pretty excited about today and, uh, what we'll be showing everybody. Heck yeah. Architecture background. you worked, uh, you worked at another firm for almost two decades, didn't you, Jim? I did, yeah, nearly two decades. And uh, for our regular uh, Evolve Lab live uh, watchers, Bill likes to bring that up. I, think, like, <laughs> I like about. to bring it a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> he likes to mention that, you know, I'm the oldest one in the group. And yeah, that's right. Been, the elder. I'm the elder. Yeah. Experienced. Experienced. Yeah. We can go with that. That sounds yeah, we'll, good. We'll go with experience. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, you bet. Cool. Miguel, you want to give an intro to yourself? Sure. So my name is Miguel. I am a, a design technology developer uh, with a background in architecture. I decided that you know architecture wasn't for me, so switched to uh, coding and automation. Uh, and I'm also the Glyph product owner. So I develop the features. I you know uh, manage the backlog and, and really think about how Glyph works and, and how will and how Glyph could be. I love it. Love it. Thanks, dude. That's great, yeah. Miguel. Cool. All right. I, I'm going to just throw out, I see uh, Todd Shackelford's in the room. Todd, good to see you, man. Hope you're doing good. Uh, we got Hendrik from uh, Madrid. Man, I think I'm curious to see who the, the furthest listener uh, is going to be. Um, we got uh, Ron from Florida. Good to see you, Ronald. I see Rick from H2I. Good to see you, man. Jason, how you doing, sir? Um, we got Ben. Defour, which is almost close to Ben Guler. I thought that was going to be our Ben. So good to see you. Um, we got Doug, SSOE, Josh, Dallas, Texas. Good to see you guys. Um, I'll keep uh, going through the list here, um, but I wanted to give a, a shout out to everyone that's calling in. Good to see everyone. Marie um, from South Africa. Did you see that one? That might be. No, I didn't. Yeah, that's awesome. That is a South Africa. That's awesome. We got some people that wanted to come in from India, but I think it's like 2 a.m. or something, India time. Right. So, yeah, for those that are wondering, it's going to be recorded so you guys can catch up later. Oh, Joseph's in the house. Joe uh, Bimtucci is here, everybody. So good to see you, Joe. Um, that's great. If you guys go to uh, uh, Joe's LinkedIn, I believe it says Joe Bimtucci, which is it's a play on Bertucci, but he throws Bim in there because uh, he's kind of a, a Bim ninja to brag on Joe a little bit. So. That's good. Good to see you, man. And Miguel, you've been chatting with Joe quite a bit, I think. So, yep. Cool. Good to see you guys. All right, we're gonna jump in here. Um, so we're gonna be talking about Glyph and what is Glyph? Glyph is a way to uh, automate documentation in Revit. Um, and I'm gonna quickly turn this over to Miguel, but I'll just kind of give us a big picture of what Glyph is and why we're we're working on uh, Glyph. So basically, this is. You know, this is a thing that I talk about is I kind of see it as, you know, the architect and engineer's assembly line. And I kind of had this experience, um, Jim and Miguel, I don't know if you guys did too or others that are uh, here. I'm curious if you guys have kind of experienced this or do experience this on your projects. But kind of what I call like the the architect or the engineer or the contractor's assembly line, you know, we got to put together drawings. 
side note, I'm going to digress and just say um, we've been talking about delivering BIM as a contract deliverable for a very long time. Uh, yes, people do it, but we still have the drawings, just to say that. I mean, we've been talking about models replacing drawings for a long time. I know in, in some European areas they're doing that, um, but a large part of the world is still delivering documents. So I'm kind of curious first if you guys could throw in the chat window if your experience is that you're still, even in the year 2022, delivering documents, if, even if it's not paper documents, PDF documents, digital documents, et cetera, et cetera. That's something I'd like to know. Um, and basically what we want to know is, you know, all these other industries are uh, innovating, they're automating, uh, you know, the way that we do manufacturing for cars. And there's still very much people involved, but it's like as much as there's a repetitive process, can we automate some of this? And so that's kind of like the vision behind Glyph is we kind of see it as this, you know, an assembly line that we still have to do today uh, with the drawing set. We got to, you know, create our floor plans, our reflected ceiling plans. We got to create our enlarged plans for all the kitchens, the bathrooms. We got to create our elevations. We got to tag and dimension those views, casework, uh, dimension the millwork, tag the doors, tag the windows, dimension the rough openings, create the sheets for all of these things, place the views on the sheets. And then we do this, and then we do the next project to do the whole process over again. And so we wanted to know if there was kind of like a, a way, you know, to automate some of this. And so we've been working on uh, this tool called Clip that helps automate a lot of this process, which automates view creation, dimensioning, tagging, et cetera. And so these are just a few gifts. We're going to get into the demo. The UI has been updated a bit. Miguel's going to be showing us some of that. Um, but basically, just a, a high level, Glyph, you know, you can create all these views that we talked about, settings specific to your firm. Um, you can create views by room. Okay, so like if you have enlarged plans, stairs, you know, the kitchen, bathrooms, things like that we talked about, you can group and create those together. Um, you can do sheet creation. So if you want to bulk create sheets for your elevations, your ceiling plans, interior finished plans, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then we have uh, a new sheet packing feature. Um, this is, I think, a little bit of the old UI. We'll have a new UI that Miguel is going to be showing this. But you can pack the views onto the sheets. Um, we can dimension um, categories within Revit, including walls and doors, casework, et cetera. So we have a dimension by category feature. We can tag uh, elements in Revit. Now, you can do a tag all not tagged in Revit, but Glyph lets you do tag all not tag multiple views. So you could, like, you know, you might have, you know, a 15 story, you know, hospital or 80 story high rise, and you want to tag all the doors and the rooms. You know, you could go through and do a tag all not tag um, in multiple views. And this is probably the part I get the most geeked out about is what we call our bundles. So all those tasks that you we just talked about, you then could take these tasks and daisy chain them together into what's called a bundle. And so then, you know, as an example, you could do your document curtain wall bundle, and it will go through and elevate every single curtain wall based on the Revit type. It will dimension all the mullions. It'll tag all the curtain wall panels. It'll create the sheets for your curtain walls, and then it'll pack the views onto the sheets. And so this is how the bundles work. And then you can set up these settings, these um, these tasks, if you will, in these bundles um, and save them. So that way on your next project, once you get all the settings and everything set up, you can then save those uh, settings and those bundles uh, for other projects and deploy them to your firm and others can use them and, and that kind of thing. So that's kind of the big picture on what Glyph is and, and how it, it functions. And I'm going to turn it over to Miguel before I, I do that. I wanted to mention just because we just, we've been in this kind of closed beta, then open beta, and now we're coming public with it so other people can kind of see it. And with that, we're celebrating um, by doing a, uh, a Glyph launch uh, discount. So you get a 15% discount uh, now through Thanksgiving uh, using uh, the promo code Glyph launch. Um, and so that's something we're doing. So uh, yeah, I'm going to turn it over to Miguel here. But while he's doing that, any comments or questions, Miguel or Jim? you guys would mention about glyph yeah just like you bill i'm i'm excited about the bundle uh feature um because yeah i spent so many years uh doing it the long way as you said um and just to be able to set that and i know miguel will mention a little bit about this going forward here but uh be able to set your standard and your revit template and just always have those same settings so you do project your projects a certain way and it's always there for you you just hit play when you jump in your model i think that's great yeah Sure. I personally wish I had Glyph when I was an intern practicing architecture. I, I wish. 
Me too, man. I do yep. too. All those days on projects. So, um, and then Miguel, do you see the share screen in the uh, portal there? There's right below our our faces. Should be able to see that, so you can share your screen. There you go. And then I'll do this. We see your screen. Perfect. Cool. Cool. Awesome. So welcome everyone. Uh, so the first thing that I want to talk about is uh, the task system. Um, Bill mentioned it a little bit, uh, but I think the task system is kind of like the core of Glyph. So the task system, uh, you can do uh, grade views by level, which is a pretty simple task. You can dimension, you can uh, tag, you can import, you can place views on sheets, and then you can combine them together to create a bundle. And I, I know we, it's just repeat information, but important and we do so export them uh, so let's imagine that you have a specific standards uh, for a specific type of project so you can essentially create these tasks uh, with the specific settings and you can export them so to so i'm just going to demo it very quickly we have the export tasks let's just say i would like these three to to be exported uh, and then we can save it i'm just gonna type it as testing and then you can import it. So you could share it between your college or the BIM manager can set up these tasks for you. And you all you have to do really is just click this thing. Hopefully, yeah, there you go. <laughs> click this thing, testing, and then import. And you can see that the tasks that I just exported, they were imported again. So that's for the export and import feature, which I believe it's very, very powerful. So to get a, to have an idea of what a task is, I am going to a, just run a very simple task. I would say is the simplest task we have on Glyph, a, which is the create views by level. So when you click it, this panel shows up and there are th three tabs. The first one is a selection, which in this case, we are going to select the levels. A, and then for the settings in here, you can really um, customize how you want that, that view to be created, whether you want it to be a dependent or you know you want to have this uh, specific view template or the view family type, and then this naming scheme. So the naming scheme is essentially going to determine how the views that you are about to create are going to be named. And that naming scheme is also for the create sheets by you know whatever, which I want to talk about it later. But without further ado, I'm just going, I'm just going to run it. So you can see that it created entry level plan just because you know in here we have name. So it used the level that level name that I selected on the previous tab for the naming convention. And, and yeah, and then you know it assigned the specific view template that we selected. Uh, it's uppercase because we selected it. So I believe you know the settings that we have on Glyph, that's where uh, I believe it's very powerful, just because um, you're gonna see throughout every single task, but we we have a level of customization that I believe it's crucial because as you may as you may, may know, every firm does does things in a different way. <laughs> so Glyph allows you to to support that really for for any task that we have. So that's for the create views by level, and a that was just one task. So before before I go to the next one, are they Jim? Are there any questions in the chat before I move to the other ones? We just had a question come in from Jason. Uh, what about creating multiple views using multiple view templates? Yeah, so creating multiple views. Uh, I hope you're referring to like the different view types, such as like reflect the same plans or full plans, uh, which you can obviously do that with by just toggling this. Uh, and for some tasks, like the create views by room, uh, we have more options. So you have like the four plan, reflect the ceiling plan, elevation, and 3D. So let's imagine that for some reason you have you want a specific level to have a specific view type. What you can do is you know combine these these tasks in a bundle. So you have the same instance of that task in a bundle, and you can essentially do that. That's great. And but you could also Miguel when you go back there. So if you you could do it with a bundle, but even within this one task, were you saying that we could also have? create floor plans and then have a floor plan view template and a reflected ceiling plan and it have Correct. a reflected ceiling plan view template, Correct. et cetera, within here? Correct, yeah. So okay, if cool. I were to run it again, you can see that we just created a ceiling plan with a specific view template and that we selected for that specific view type. Nice. 
within that one task. So you could do it, you know, those ones within that task, but if there's certain things in here that maybe aren't, you want to do multiple floor plans, for example, you could combine multiple tasks of floor plans for a bundle, for example. Correct. Yep. Okay, cool. Then the career views by scope box, I'm just going to run it. Pretty much the settings are the same. It's essentially a, you just have the levels and then you have the scope boxes, you click it, you can see that a, you know, we, you know, that we created the view and the scope box is assigned according to your selection. Hmm. So this is usually useful for big projects where you have multiple areas and you need a, a four plan. You, you know, you might have the overall a four plan, the first level, and then you might have like the specific area plans. So this mm -hmm. is useful for that. Yeah. So if you have like seven different areas, area A, B, C, D, E, et cetera, um, 20 stories, you could run this and it'll create floor plans and ceiling plans by scope box for each area you're saying. Correct. Yep. That's Sweet. Correct. Dude, Good. I wish I had this. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Um, perfect. So the create views by room, a um, pretty straightforward. All you have to do, you know, I'm just going to create a call out. So in this case, we go to the big creation setting, call out, and I'm going to go to the first full plan so you can see the call out. I, the pairing view is this one. And then I also want elevations, for example. And da, 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 da. if we go to the selection tab, you can either do two things. You can select it from the list of rooms, which, as you can tell, there are a lot. So what I usually do, just use this button right here that allows you to manually select the rooms on your active view, mm. which I find it useful because I'm I don't I don't feel like scrolling through every single uh, list, you know, trying to find my my room. So mm. I can just run it. And what is what is going to do is going to create the callout and he's going to create an elevation of all the walls on your project. So you can see that if we go to that callout that we just created, it created the elevation. So if we go to that elevation and you can see that uh, it was named according to where the direction of the elevation is pointing to. So in this case is the north. Oh snap. <laughs> and in a bit, I will be running the and large points bundle bundle, which I personally think is awesome. A eh, that uses the create views by room. That's great. So this is good. Like if you have views on your current floor plan that you can pick, but if you have like, say you want to do one like in large plan for all my kitchens and bathrooms and my kitchens and bathrooms are on a floor above my view, I could pick the drop. I could pick from the drop here. Correct. Yep. Or could I filter by like kitchen or bathroom? Like, can I type in something in the search window yeah. for all my kitchens and bathrooms or something like for that? Sure, yeah. You can either use the search element. So let's just say, you know, I don't know if we have kitchens in these models, but I know we have restrooms. So we can say, uh, you know, woman restrooms, we can just click them. Or you can use this uh, button that essentially will filter all the elements uh, based on a specific parameter. So in this case, we have the name. And then I only want the one that says contains uh, one at the list. And you can see that it auto select the rooms oh. for you. And um, so you don't have to essentially. Uh, okay. That's awesome. Perfect. So I will talk about those in the bundle. And um, but let's just jump into create sheets by level. So as you probably know, Revit doesn't allow you to assign a level to a sheet. So what we do is uh, we use the level for the name of the sheet that we are about to create. So in this case, we are going to pick two levels and then let's go to the to the sheets. That way you can see it. And then in the settings, you can say uh, the sheet number uh, where you would like to start creating sheets. So in this case, we are just going to say B and today is 1027, so 1027. Uh, and then for the name scheme again, it's going to use the level name and then this custom thing that I, you know, that I created that I'm just going to put test for fun. And then I can run it. And you can see in a matter of like, I don't even think that was a second, but uh, essentially it created the, the sheet for you with a specific name and the specific sheet number. That's awesome. So yeah, we have a few. Oh, I was gonna say we have a few questions, okay. Miguel. I don't know if now is a good time, or I don't want to yes, interrupt your. Always. Okay. Yep. So we have some uh, some questions about 
uh, naming views. Can you okay. use a custom naming convention for elevations when automatically created? I think you just kind of showed that, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. And then there was another one. Can I tweak the name of the elevation? Can I tweak the elevation name by default with a room number and direction in it? So can you name it by room number? Um, and and then will it give it the you know north, uh, east, southwest? Yeah. So if we go to the create views by room, we have the elevation. Imagine that you don't want the name. You can just say room number. So room number. And then in here, you could say, you know, if you don't want the custom for whatever reason, you, you can erase that. So it is automatically going to uh, add that north or east. So essentially, that direction is going to add it automatically. Uh, we are we do have it in the backlog, a, a way for you to determine how, um, you know, the direction essentially. So, you know, whether you like it north, south, east, west, uh, or you like it the opposite way. So kind of clockwise or, or you know, kind of kind of. I think I just said the same thing, but hopefully yep. I got the, the point across. And hopefully that answers your question. Yep, I think so. There was another one about what if north is not up, right? So I think that answers yep. that question. Right. Um, another one from Jason, what determines the interior elevations boundaries when automatically created? So the boundary, it's going to be determined by, so if I, if I go to the four, first floor plan, let's just say, and I click tab, and you can see that the boundary is there for the room boundaries. So it essentially creates a room. And it essentially creates that call out around that room. And you also have the option to determine what kind of offset you would like to use. So let's imagine that for whatever reason, you instead of one, you would like to do four feet. And I'm just going to run it. That, that way you can see it. It's essentially going to create a call out that is four feet outside of, of, of that room. So obviously offset from that room. So I'm just going to run it da, da, da. and you can see that, you know, there is four feet there in every single direction. So that's what it's determined. So if there is like a weird room where like a bunch of corners, it will also do that. It will try to actually what it's going to try to do. If you have a very weird room, it's going to try to get the rectangle of it. That way, you know, the crop box of like the crop curves of that call out is they're not like really weird. Mm -hmm. Great. It's and then may, <laughs> maybe one more uh, before I let you continue with your demo. So this is a kind of clarification from a previous question uh, where we answered what about creating multiple views mm -hmm. using multiple view templates. Um, so what if they wanted to make a plan package, right? So automatically make some overall plans, some code plans, and some you know finished floor plans all at the same time. Is that possible? Or do you do those in separate bundles? I will say the best way to do that would be to create the, you know, the add the create views by level multiple times or the create views by scope box multiple times within a bundle. That way, you know, you pick the same scope boxes, you pick the same levels, and all you have to do is really just change the view template for each task. Um, and it will do that for you with just one click. Um, right. So you're doing it multiple times, but you, like you said before, you can set you can preset these into bundles so they could just always be in there you just hit play on your you know overall plan bundle and it will just create it for you so it's not you're not doing a bunch of extra steps uh you could preset those correct yeah so i'm just doing it here i i, I went a little quick there but it, this button right here allows you to create tasks and bundles so all i'm doing right here is add task to bundle create use by level and again for that specific case all you have to do is a select one level or select multiple levels and then go to the settings doo -doo 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 -doo, and then you know pick the specific view template for that for that specific view and you go to the next level you're going to next task and then you change a different a, a different you know view template hopefully that awesome. answers your question yeah and, i think so all right yep any more questions before i move on uh, we do have more questions. Um, I don't know if you want to keep moving or I know we have a lot to cover, but um, how about this one? Can can Glyph fill out custom parameters beyond those built into Revit from Christopher? That's a good question. Uh, are you talking about like sheets, like create sheets by, by whatever, or are you talking about create views or in general, essentially? Like can, can we set certain parameters to a specific views that we just created? Yeah, I think... I think Sorry. I'll 
Uh, I'll answer it both ways, I think, as I understand the question. You, there's, you can't right now in Glyph add, and Miguel, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can't add extra parameter fields to Glyph if they don't exist in Revit. You can only pull from the parameters that already exist in Revit, but those don't have to be out of the box parameters. They can be a shared parameter. They can be a project parameter uh, that someone creates within their model. It, it doesn't have to be only out of the box. That is correct, and we do have it on the on the backlog. I think I just saw uh, his response. Uh, we do have it on the backlog to essentially allow you to set whatever parameter you want and whatever value you want. Um, mm -hmm. So, but you can put a a, yeah. a value, right? So, like you could say, you know, if you wanted to have a, an append or uh, append like a parameter, you could have something, you know, all caps for called printed or something like that. Is that right? Or am I misunderstanding that? Like for view name, if I wanted to have like these views uh, pull from, uh, and I can say that they're all caps printed, underscore printed, or something like that for their view name, right? Uh, you can, yes. Uh, so for the naming, yeah. But like setting a specific value to a specific parameter, that's something we don't allow. But yeah, okay. you can definitely add whatever parameter you want that is available uh, in that specific category. Yeah, I'd mentioned too that I mean you can you can assign a view template, right? So I know a lot of times the view templates will set some of those like sheet parameters, for example, or view parameters. So I don't know if Chris, if that answers your question. But if so if it's like for project browser organization or something, a lot of times that's set in the view template. And so if you're setting your view template when you create your views, that's going to be taken care of for you. Yep. Good questions. Thank yeah, you. Good questions. Keep it coming, please. Yeah, keep the questions. Okay. And then so I will, so I can run every single task, but for the sake of time, create sheets by scope box, same thing is going to use the scope box for the naming room, the same thing. And then these two tasks is the ones that we just, uh, that we just imported when we are demoing the export feature. Yeah, and real quick, while you're going on to the next task here, Miguel, yeah. um, if you guys can, can you guys comment in the chat window? I'm curious, do you guys have your own standards at your firm for like view names or sheet names? Do you adhere to like some of like the industry standards like AIA? Uh, we'd really like to know, you know, kind of what kind of standards you might have at your firm specifically as we move on to the next topic. Yep, and that's a really good point. A when your firm has standards a, or when you are trying to implement standards, Glyph can also help with that. A, just because, you can, again, you can set up this specific task with a specific setting. So all you have to do is import, select elements, and then run the task. So it's a good way to keep, a, you know, to keep that standards across your firm a, just because you, you, can, you, you have a lot of settings that you can change. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we will definitely respond to all the questions. And I'm, I am going to continue uh, running uh, the task. Uh, and you know, I, the next task is the one that I'm particularly excited about. Uh, just because uh, dimensioning, I don't know about you all, but I don't find it fun. I, I know some people think it's an art, and it, there could be an art, right? But personally, you know, I started architecture. I didn't you know, spend five years for me to just click tab and finding the, the right reference of the wall. That's just personally not what I want to do, right? Uh, but maybe you do. And if you do, you know, props to you. Uh, but essentially what this task is going to do is uh, you have the specific categories that we have available right now. And in this case, we are, are going to uh, dimension all the walls on this view right here. So you can, again, you can, uh, you know, OK, let me scroll down and pick the specific view. But uh, call me lazy, but I like to click this thing, active view, and call it good. And then in the settings, a, we have these wall dimension options. So you can do interior wall dimensions. You can do exterior wall rough opening dimensions. You can do overall exterior wall length. Or you could do then, you know, I want a dimension of the entire building. And we also allow you to do that. So for, for fun, I'm going to select all of them. And then for the reference, a, let's just say walls in line, but you have all these options that a, are available. And then from the offset from level, just one, and then tie it to the grid. Again, a, there are certain conditions where you might want a dimension to be tied to a grid. A, that way, the contractor can actually build it. A, so you also have that option. So we can keep it tied to the nearest grid. 
So without further ado, I can run it. And in a matter of like not uh, maybe a second, it essentially dimensioned all your interior walls. And then it dimensioned uh, the exterior walls. And you may say, you know what? I don't like these uh, overlapping dimensions. Like they are, they're annoying to me. So what you can do is undo that transaction. So on the top left, you can say dimension views. I, you know what? Let me undo that. I didn't like it. Let me run it again. I'm going to add a 2.5 offset. And again, only take a second. And you can see that the dimensions moved uh, in a way so they are not overlapping each other. So it dimension your entire building. We have the exterior uh, dimensions with the rough openings, the interior walls, uh, referencing the specific layer of the wall, uh, as well as your building dimensions. So in here, you can see that you know we have this dimension that you know apparently this building it's a hundred foot a uh, tall. That's incredible. I want to, if it's okay, real quick. So what's cool about this is Miguel, you, you picked the settings. For, so if you wanted to on this, and I think you might've done it, like you could do like finish face of stud, right? Because that's typically how someone's going to lay out their floor plan is where they dimension to. I remember when I was working at an architecture firm, we had someone that was dimensioning, you know, manually just using the Revit dimension tool and they they were dimensioning a quarter, they accidentally dimensioned to a, a door jam and the quarter, actually they built it based on that miss uh, pick. It got by the project manager, got by the fire marshal, the contractors got in there, they built it. They had to rip out that wall, replace it due to a simple like, you know, human error. So does something like this help mitigate some, some of that? Like, yes, it's an art, yes, we want to like look it over. We don't want to just let the computer roam free. But is there a way that this can help, you know, quality control where it's always dimensioning to finish face of stud and it's not picking, you know, something that is it's not supposed to be picking per se? Yep. I, I really believe that could, you know, Glyph could help with that. Um we are not saying that we are smarter than machines, but machines tend to be a little bit more uh, on on efficient if they're you know written in the, in the right way. Uh, so, you know, to your point, Bill, uh, this could definitely help with the QAQC process, I would say, because mm -hmm. again, it's going to be a, almost always right. And if it's not almost always right, for whatever reason the code could not figure out, uh, the code will tell you uh, when things are, are not uh, the way they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And it, maybe it gets you like 60% of the way there, right? And you go in and you fill in the last 40 or you move some strings around. But to your point, you're not going through that wall, tab, 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 okay, finish face of stud, move on to the next room, et cetera, right? That is correct, yeah, 100%. Okay, cool. Yeah, I love that offset feature, um, yeah. you know, and yeah, like you said, Bill, you place all of these automatically, and then maybe you come in and slide some strings around a little bit to clean it up for, based off of the other annotation that's on your drawing or whatever might be on your plans. But man, how much time is that saving just to not have to click every every wall or every window? Totally, yeah. And I just see a uh, Joe's a uh, Bertusi, which I'm very familiar with. And uh, he mentioned <laughs> you have, have jobs at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, we are definitely not trying to replace jobs. We are just trying to make your job, uh, you know, more fun. Personally, um, at least you know what we consider more fun. We are trying to automate that a uh, eighty percent of the repetitive tasks. That way, you can uh, sort of spend time doing what you like, whether it's I don't know, creating details, <laughs> a bathroom details or whatever you like, or, or really whatever you want, right? We're just trying to help you uh, make your job a little faster and, and hopefully more fun. Yeah, I want to no. speak to that for just a sec, sorry. Uh, you know, when we transition from AutoCAD to Revit, and you know, Revit does a great job where you drop in an elevation marker and it elevates your room, no one was going, wait, 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 Revit's trying to put us out of a job because now it just, auto elevated. No, it's a tool, just like a calculator is a tool, just like anything's a tool that helps you do your job and just do it more efficient. Yep. We do have a couple of questions. I don't know if now's a good time, Miguel. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. cool. So Corey wrote, uh, are there plans or thoughts on the CA phase on the arc side? When one thing changes, it can snowball revisions to other sheets. Could there be a function that can help populate revision clouds on sheets? That's a good point. Um, we have not looked into it yet, and it's not available in Glyph. Um, but this is the kind of feedback that we are looking for. Um, you know, 
if you if you're saying that it probably takes a long time for my experience it does it does take a long time to you know add these revision clouds which are kind of annoying sometimes because you can't find them and you know that's something that we want to look at it and and we will definitely add it to to the backlog for glyph cool and then how about um what about walls that are diagonal what like it, for those? it will we can run it right now um essentially as long as there is two walls that are diagonal because as you may know you cannot a uh, dimension uh, you know you cannot create that dimension if you don't have two things mm -hmm. uh, that is not diagonal for example <laughs> parallel sorry there we go so i think you know if i if you can dimension it on on revit you can dimension it using glyph and let's see da, 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 interior walls and i'm just gonna run this wall cell line and you can see that uh, it created that dimension. So you, you know, imagine you don't have this wall. You could also have a grid that is parallel to that diagonal wall, and it will still place that dimension as long as you have that tie condition set to the nearest grid. Yep. Yeah, and like you said, we're not to, trying to take anyone's jobs here, right? right? So it gets you most of the way there. And then if you have right. a one-off wall that's diagonal, maybe you have to come in and dimension that one wall or whatever yep. it is. Um, okay, so Tim had a question. What if some walls are deleted and new walls placed? When you run this again, are the on the same view, does it replace what you did or fix what was deleted slash added? So we, we in Glyph, we don't delete anything, just so you know. And we try to not go that path just because that could get frustrated for the user. And so we, in, you know, to answer your question, if you create new walls and you run the task again, we will it will create that dimension a uh, twice and that's something that we have it on the backlog uh, to you know figure out which walls are already dimensioned and only dimension the walls that don't have a dimension associated to that wall so definitely on the backlog is definitely a, an issue that we really want to look at it um, and and yeah just thank you for for bringing it up cool and then we had a couple questions about uh international building code um but I would defer to our uh, Evolve Lab code tools. Maybe we could have a separate conversation about those, unless, Bill, if you had anything to add, if you read those questions. But... I did, yeah. No, I think that's a good comment, Jim. OK, cool. All right. Perfect. Awesome. So um, the dimension seats by category. So this task, it performs in a similar way than the task I just ran. But in, in the difference between this one and this one is that instead of picking views, you pick sheets. So imagine I go to the to this uh, sheet that has a, I don't know how many elevations, but those quite like five, six elevations um, of casework. So all you have to do is click casework sheet and uh, change the category because we are not dimensioning walls. We are dimensioning a uh, casework. If we go to the settings, we just you can pick whatever reference um, you know you would like to use for that dimension and then here we don't want to tie it to the grid uh, you could but right now we don't um, and then you when you run the task it's going to dimension it's going to look at all the views that are on that sheet then it's going to determine whether there is a case work inside that elevation and then if there is then it's going to dimension so you can see that it created a um, the dimensioning for the top a uh, portion of your case work the bottom and also the height of each one Dude, um, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. I think of it just like view templates, like how you could apply view templates in that same view. To, you can do this on a on a sheet level. This is really, really, really powerful. Yep, and you know, you may be, you know, I, I can see with dimensioning. I know there's a lot of skeptics out there, and I totally understand. But a uh, just so you know, we are working on a feature that would allow you to compose that that sort of dimensioning strings. So what I mean by that is that with these new features that we are developing would allow you to uh, sort of, you know, determine where you would like that dimension to be placed. And then, you know, you just run it and it will create that dimension for you. So right now, you know, it's pretty standard for case work. It's going to create that top, bottom, and height. But for other instances, uh, you know, we, we do have different settings. And that leads me to my my second point regarding dimensioning. Again, if I talk too much about dimensioning, it's because 
I find it fascinating uh, and it's something that I love automating personally. So, um, you know, we look at walls, we look at caseworks and, you know, some of you may, may be asking, hey, how about, you know, lighting fixtures? So we can, we can dimension lighting fixtures. So if we go to this ceiling plan, we have, as you can see, a row of lighting fixtures and then some horizontal long uh, lighting fixtures. So what we can do is go to the, back to the dimension views by category. We can go to the selection tab and then <clears throat> select lighting fixtures. And then we're going to select again. I like to use this tool. I don't I don't feel like going through the through the list. Uh, settings, you can say I want the center left right a reference and offset, whatever you want, tied to the nearest grid. And you can see that it dimension every single lighting fixture. And it, obviously it tied to the grid just because we set it on this setting. And it created, you know, the dimensions, this dimension string and then this ones. Okay, before moving to tagging. Is there any, is there any other questions regarding dimensioning? I have, I have a question. Uh, what categories does Glyph support for dimensioning? So these are some architectural examples. You have lighting here. What are all the categories we support? So we support casework, ceiling, doors, docks, and electric equipment, electrical fixtures. I just saw a comment if we auto dimension generic models, and the answer is yes, we do. Um, and then with the generic models, sorry, I'm going back and forth with the comments since we are kind of talking about it. Yeah. Uh, so will the generic models need a specific reference plane types to allow it to be dimension? And uh, yes, a uh, usually yes, a uh, you will you know that specific generic model will have to be set up in a specific way in order you know if you pick the specific references. But just so you know, usually families will have center left right or center front back. Um, as a RASA standard, pretty much. But if you don't have that, this script is going to be like, hey, it's going to yell at you a little bit. It's going to show up a snack bar right here, and it's going to tell you, hey, just so you know, you're trying to dimension this, this, family, this family that doesn't have the reference you selected. Thanks, Miguel. Yeah. How about on Revit links? That was another question. That's another one that we have on um, the backlog. Uh, we, we do want to. Uh, we do want to add that feature in the future, uh, and we are working on it because uh, we we know that a lot of you all uh, use Revit links, and and that will definitely be added in the upcoming releases for Glyph. So stay tuned and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> smash that like button. Yeah, smash that like button. <laughs> Perfect answer, Tim says. Um, Aaron just asked one more dimension question before we move on here. Uh, yeah. Is there a feature that can pull the dimensions off the string to keep them readable? You know, like if you have some really tight little dimensions. Yeah. So you could either use the offset, but uh, we are, I feel like I keep repeating myself. Like if, uh, I keep saying we are working on it and, and we are working <laughs> on it. And the reason I keep saying this is because we have a great goals for Glyph. So to answer your question, we are working on uh, like an auto detection, like a class detection for like annotations. So it will, you know, once you turn that on, it will automatically move that dimension, uh, you know, up, down, left, right, whatever, you know, you that dimension is placed um, according, accordingly, right? That way things are not overlapping each other because uh, we believe that's really important. And, um, you know, I, I always, for some people, I always hear that that comment of like, well, yeah, there's still a lot of work to be done. They're dimensioning, you know, on top of each other. And and they're right. You're totally right. But this is just like the, the first step of Glyph, right? And, you know, the second step, we will add the class detection. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see if they have the same comments. <laughs> so so we'll see. Yeah, good, good question. Yeah, good answer, Miguel. OK. So moving to tagging. So as Bill was saying, the tagging feature, um, essentially, it, it's a little smarter than the than the toggle function in Revit, uh, for two reasons. The first of all, the toggle function in Revit doesn't allow you to do multiple views, and the second one, uh, the toggle function doesn't really care about graphics. Uh, not throwing shade at, at Revit uh, by any means or at a desk, just like. We went a little, um, you know, we, we took a step farther, right? So with this task, it allows you to, uh, 
and I'm just going to demo it. So let me go to the case worksheet. Case worksheet. Perfect. Where we place the dimensions previously. And we can just select them. Um, and so what this is going to do is going to create the tags for all the case work automatically. And uh, where are your case work? There you go. Okay. And then the settings, you can pick, you know, pretty much everything that you can do um, on, in, in Revit, right? You can pick horizontal, vertical, tag condition, depending how you want it, whether you want a leader or not, a, and the specific tag family that you would like to use. So if I just run it, da, 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 you can see that it created, you know, this specific uh, tag. And, you know, again, the comment of like, things are overlapping each other, you're, you're totally right. But uh, we are working on on the feature that uh, would you know move the the, the tax to a specific corner depending on what you want. Uh, so kind of like the dimension composer that I previously talked about, uh, the the tag composer will be in a similar way. Good comment. Yeah. Okay. So I hope I'm not boring anyone. But... No, I find really it is fascinating, not. but uh, <laughs> people can can have different opinions. So the import sheets uh, by spreadsheet, um, essentially you have an Excel sheet um, that you can import and then you can create sheets. We find these that uh, some of you all have this workflow and Glyph allows you to do that in a pretty fast way. So all you have to do is click the Excel sheet uh, path, then this window is going to show up, then you click a uh, the specific uh, worksheet that you would like to use. And then this other window is going to show up. And then in here, you can say, you know what, this column on the actual sheet, I want to use it for the sheet number. Then this column for the sheet name. But you could, you know, imagine you have another column that says a uh, Jim Grief, a, uh, you know, was draw these sheets. You can also add that. <laughs> <laughs> so once you click import, you get, you, get, you just click this one again. And you can see that uh, the script and um, the task created the all the sheets for you. Awesome. awesome. Sweet. Perfect. Okay. So to talk about the view, well, before I before I move on, are there questions regarding tagging? Jim? Uh let's see. Does tagging work with multi category tags? Multi category tags. Uh, I don't think think so right now, uh, but you can uh, tag multiple categories at the same time. So Okay. Also, can you add the landing and control the length of the landing? Um, by landing, do you mean like, because I think of landing, I think of stairs, but I could be wrong. Yes. Uh, was that from Tim? Yeah. Yeah, Tim, can you uh, specify what you mean by, uh, can you add a landing? As we wait on that, okay. I think. As we wait. Yeah, and... I'll let you know when that question comes in, okay. Miguel, if you want to keep moving. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So to talk about the place region seats, uh, first I'm going to demo it, what you can do, and then I'm going to run it using I think one of the best features that we have in Glyph, which is the, um, which is the the bundles. So it, he just responded, landing of the leader. So you can set that up uh, for the tags. You can change. So if I go to the tag task again and the settings leader, you can say uh, two feet. So that's going to you know it's going to the leader is going to be two feet essentially. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. And the leader elbow, the leader elbow, you cannot set that right now. It will usually be a straight right now, but it will change. Anyways, uh, place vision seats. So we believe this task is very important and because you can create you know, views, but if you don't put them on a sheet, the contractor is not going to see it, uh, so it's kind of useless. Um, so this, this task allows you to uh, place whatever legends, uh, drafting views, uh, four plans, elevations, pretty much every single type of view uh, in whatever way you want. So as you can see right here, we have these, uh, this first layout that is just one column. 
Uh, so, um, you know, this is just picture it is a representation of your title block. And here we have the above that title block. Uh, so what you can do, you can edit it or you can create new layouts, right? So uh, I find this UI pretty awesome. It's like a game. So, but you can, you can create like a space. Essentially you can say, where are you? It's gone. Oh, there you go. Uh, okay. You can say, you know what? I want in zone number one, I want four plans. And then here I want legend notes. Or, you know, you can say in here, I want four plans, elevations, then legends or yeah, schedules if you want, right? So you can exactly do that. So in here, in zone number one, I want to say I want four plans. In zone number two, I want elevations. And zone number three, I want legends, a multiple legends, actually. And again, I'm not going to run it just because I did not select any views, but I will run the task on a bundle. But I just wanted to show you the, the, the settings for the place vision sheets task because I believe it's 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 really powerful. That's really cool. Yeah. This, some of these some of these features um, are fairly new. Like so, some of these I'm seeing these for the first time. So that's super impressive. I'm glad you it, like it. Yeah, and it does look like fun too. By the way, I don't know personally. I don't know small things in in life, right? Small things <laughs> like UI, you know. I don't right. know. Anyways. So the enlarge plans bundle, um, I'm going to run the first bundle, uh, which essentially is going to create a, it's going to do a lot of things, but it's going to create that callout that I previously created using the create views by room task. Then it's going to dimension uh, that callout. Uh, it's also going to create sheets uh, based on, on, on the rooms that you previously selected. And then it's going to place the views on the sheet. So you know, to go back to the settings of, of how the place vision sheets work is essentially if you go to the settings, I'm going to place the four plans here and the elevations here. So the room elevations and the four plan on the left. So all I have to do is go here and I'm just going to select this instruction room and the men's bathroom. And then you just run it and it should take about three seconds, a which you know, might seem like a lot, but just think about everything that is doing it for you is creating that call out is creating that elevation. And let me see. Da, 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 da. Think it's I, naming it for you. It's naming it for you. Give me one second. I think I forgot to change a setting, which is not good. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, well, you're doing that, Miguel. I can't think, man, on projects, just the amount of time I would spend, like drop an elevation marker, right click, rename, type in the, the view title, you know, create the oh, call yeah. out. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah, it's like the death by a thousand cuts, you know, like even placing views on a sheet, you know, how often when you have a thousand views in your project browser and you're scrolling, trying to find the right view to drag onto your sheet, you know, oh, man. If, if this just does this for you, uh, yeah, it's going to save tons of time. Yeah. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I think I I ran the the specific not, task, but not the project. Oh. So that's why. So this is a good point, though. So you could run. There's a play button in each task that you could run just the task, or you could go to the bundle up at the top and run the bundle. Right? Is that correct. the difference? That is correct. Yeah. So okay. what I did before is just run this specific task instead of the bundle. Oh, so okay. as you can see, you know. It um, created the sheet, it created the call out, it created the elevations for it, it placed it on a the specific point that you selected. And it, obviously things views are not overlapping each other, which for us is a pretty big deal because again, graphics are very important. So it created that call out, a, it created that sheet for the two view for the two rooms that we selected. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Very cool. Before I go to the Cornwall bundle, we have five minutes, right, Bill? Yep, five minutes. OK, so I'm going to run the Cornwall bundle because I personally love it. So what I'm going to do is add the place vision sheets task um, and then the create views by category. So create views by category, it's going to create a, a, an elevation or a plan or whatever a, or whatever you or whatever category you want. So in this case, I want just these curtain walls right here. This little this little rectangle right here and then a uh, is going to dimension that cordon wall uh, based on your settings so if we go to the settings quick 
uh, you can dimension it, the emollient center line or the emollient's width. And for the place vision sheets, I'm going to change the layout to be elevations on one side and legends on the other side. So if I go to create a new layout, and then here I want the elevations here in this corner right here, I want the legends. So this legend and this placeholder legend that I previously created. So when I run it, it's going to create that elevation. And I think I'm, oh yeah, I, I messed up because I did not select a, the, the sheet where I would like to place those views. So that's, you know, that's an issue when you run things quickly. And live, so then, it's expected with the live demo. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's right. So I just selected the corner wall elevations a, a sheet. And if I go to that view, you can see that the legend nodes were placed as well as the curtain walls with the dimensions. You can always add the, the tag tasks to this a bundle. And yeah. Dude, that's so quick. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, and one last thing, I promise I'll be fast, Bill, uh, is this, this button right here, status report. It allows you to see what was created. And we find this very useful because the interaction between the, the add-in and the user uh, is very important. Uh, so in here, you can say, you know, you ran this bundle, uh, these views, the, the view was placed, uh, this specific uh, room was created, sorry, specific view was created, uh, and pretty much, you know, everything. So that's so, awesome. So now to questions, if, if we have time. Yeah, let's do questions. Um, I think we have two minutes, so we might have to be maybe quicker. What I want to do, if it's okay, I might um, hijack the screen share real quick. Yeah, of course. Um, and I might just mention, so like if anyone is interested in testing out Glyph, trying it at your firm, et cetera, you could go to evolvelab.io forward slash Glyph. That'll get you to the, the landing page. And there's um, more information on this. So if you're curious, you know, kind of how it, it works, the different tasks that it supports, it's out here. Um, there's also going to be what versions it supports. Um, up at the top, uh, we also have, you know, our forums. Um, that are available right there. Uh, people have been asking for, you know, uh, workflows and white papers and things like that. Um, so if you're interested in, you know, how to dimension views, uh, Claire and our team has done a great job of documenting some of these uh, workflows um, and we'll continue to add on to this. So just some resources there if you're wanting to go kind of like a deeper dive on Glyph uh, and learn more about it. So that's what I might do to kind of end us here, I do, because I want to be sensitive to, to everyone's time. If there's other questions you guys have, um, you can hit us up on the website, go to contact us. We can do demos for you and your firm. Um, but yeah, any any other last thoughts, comments uh, that you have, Miguel or Jim? Nope, just thank you everyone for joining Yeah. Me. Yep, thanks everyone. Miguel, there was one comment uh, towards the end there that Autodesk should just hire you, you know, to develop their software. To hire all of us, really. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, sitting in today. Great. Thanks for all the chatting in the, in the comments there. Uh, again, hit us up if you guys have any questions or want to go deeper into Glyph. Miguel, thanks uh, to all your hard work on Glyph. And I know Ames and Ben and Clara and other team members on our team have also contributed to the tool. Dan. Uh, on the sheet packing, Mark uh, has been helping out a ton. Um, so big shout out to the whole team uh, for all the efforts on Glyph. It's been a group effort to try to get it to where it is uh, today. Um, with that, we appreciate everyone and you guys have 